have like long hairs, like little bit coarse hair around the midline or dorsal midline, that region or that part is called mane. Okay. Then between two ears, we see the protuberance, that is the pole. Okay. Pole, P O L N. Okay, pole. And then as we come backward, between two scapulae, that region is called withers. Okay, guys. Uh, which is the region of the, or you can say the protuberance between two ears, which is supposed to be the caudal most part of the skull. Okay. Then we see the main, which is the dorsal midline, where we have the coarse hair. That region is called main. And then we, as we come caudally between two scapulae, that region is called withers. Okay. Uh, basically, we have three major uh, bursae located in this region. Uh, we have the cranial nuchal bursa, caudal nuchal bursa, as well as supraspinous bursa located along the nuchal ligament, or basically it is present between funicular part of the ligamentum nuchae and the bones. Bones being atlas axis as well as the spinous process of the third cervical vertebra. Okay? Those bursae are located at different levels, and sometimes those bursae may get inflamed, and that's why we need to know their locations. Okay, but those are not really present at the pole. The cranial nuchal bursa is present right behind the pole. Okay, and then there is one more important space here that is your atlanto occipital space. Okay, that could be used sometimes by bending the head to get into the subarachnoid space or something okay so that is some of the important features of the external of say, anatomy of the neck region okay uh, in the horse obviously we're gonna see the neck is longer than the donkey okay it's not as short as we see here in the donkey it's slightly longer so usually we get little bit larger areas for like venipuncture of the external jugular vein as well as you get little larger area for the intramuscular injections in the neck region Okay. But still, those are like people are a little bit now inclined, a little bit away from performing intramuscular injections into the neck as opposed to doing it in the pectoral region. Okay. Also, uh, gluteal muscles was also considered as one of the good sites for intramusculars, but even that has complications like formation of abscesses, which is quite difficult to drain. Okay. Uh, any abscess formation in the pectoral region would be easily drained by means of gravity, but if the abscess forms on the, in the gluteal region, it becomes difficult to drain that way. Okay? In the neck region, possibilities of damaging deep cervical artery, deep cervical vein, okay? as well as uh, dorsal branch of the accessory nerve, those things are more. Even sometimes laminar part of the ligamentum nuchae may be damaged because of the long needle. And then when ligament is damaged, it takes long time for recovery, so it might even hamper the normal behavior of the animal. Okay, so avoiding those things, we prefer like the pectoral muscles would be the better site for intramuscular injections. Okay, okay. Now let's look at the neck region. So here, as we uh, we have taken our incision from the uh, pole or just caudal to the ear, we have gone ventrally to the ventral midline. Okay, uh, actually these incisions should be done in that way, having to skin flap on both sides but in order to in order to keep that specimen good so we have just decided to remove the skin on one side so we can always put it back okay so we see that incision behind the ear and then it goes along the caudal angle of the mandible goes ventrally to the ventral midline then caudal incision is along the like just along the shoulder joint or you can see shoulder region that also goes to the ventral midline which is close to the manubrium sterni or most point of the sternum that is your manubrium sternum okay uh, by doing so we have reflected the skin and that's what we see when we reflect the skin in the donkey okay uh, let's put some of the outlines there uh, what we can see in this particular dissection now as we reflect the skin we're gonna see the superficial fascia okay and as in ruminants uh, as well as in dog we saw like on the head, we have a superficial muscle which is called platysma or cutaneous fasciae. Then same muscle may extend further into the neck forming cutaneous coli and that muscle also extends on the shoulder and the trunk forming cutaneous omobrachialis and cutaneous trunchae. Okay, So just below the skin we have superficial fascia as well as cutaneous coli muscle. Okay. 
Uh, now there are major differences between cutaneous coli of the horse and cutaneous coli of the donkey. Uh, cutaneous coli muscle of the horse would be originating from the manubrium sterni. The muscle is very thick in the caudal half of the neck or you can say in the caudal part of the neck just cranial to the shoulder joints and that forms some sort of collar like structure on both sides. Okay, and what happens because of this, because of the thickness of that muscle in that caudal part of the neck, the external jugular vein is completely covered by the cutaneous coli muscle and it becomes inaccessible in the caudal half of the neck. Okay, uh, usually you can feel the jugular groove in the live animal. In the horse it is quite easy to feel and find the external jugular vein because it is not covered by any thick muscle or any cutaneous coli. Okay? But in the donkey it would be slightly difficult because it is covered by fibers of the cutaneous coli which is almost like uh, a millimeter or two thick. So it becomes difficult in the donkey to raise the jugular vein as it could be easily raised in the, in the horse. Okay? Also you get a little longer area to work on in the neck of the horse because it is longer than the donkey. Okay? Uh, okay, so in this one we can see the external jugular vein as well as common carotid artery is accessed in order to infuse fluid into this animal for embalming purpose. So we can see our external jugular vein should be located along this line as well as jugular groove is located along this line. Okay, so what we see in the superficial uh, dissection here we see the cutaneous coli muscle. Whatever we see here is all your cutaneous coli. Okay, we can see the thickness right here. The muscle would be that thick. Okay, covering lower part of the neck and as it goes more laterally and dorsally then muscle becomes thinner and thinner. As it goes on the dorsal aspect or we can say along the dorsal midline then it would just remain as fascia. So you may not really find fibers of cutaneous coli along the dorsal midline or on the dorsal lateral aspect but on the ventral aspect and ventral lateral aspect the cutaneous coli is thicker in the donkey. In the horse there is no cutaneous coli in this region it would be just covered by superficial fascia and so the external jugular vein is quite superficial. But in the donkey cutaneous coli is extensive. Uh, really f instead of starting from here and going on both sides the muscle would spread all over the ventral aspect as well as it would go on both sides. And so whatever we see here that is part of the cutaneous coli. Now if I have to go for deep dissection on this side, I will have to remove this cutaneous coli, then only I can see the low, like deeper muscles of the neck. Okay? So the major difference between horse and donkey is in terms of cutaneous coli, where the cutaneous coli is more extensive in the donkey, in the horse it would be only limited to the lower part of the neck. Okay? And that's why we usually say like the accessing jugular vein or venipuncture should be done in the cranial half. Okay? Okay, now, uh, as we try to look for some of the muscles of the neck here, we can see uh, that's your brachiocephalicus. Then we have cutaneous coli covering part of that. Then we have, oh, sorry, brachiocephalicus muscle right here. Omotransversarius muscle right here. Trapezius muscle right here. Okay, uh, but we still cannot see it because everything is covered by cutaneous coli. Okay. There is no muscle or no part on the neck here which is not covered by either uh, the muscle fibers of the cutaneous coli or apodiosis of the cutaneous coli. Okay? So everything is covered so nothing is clearly visible. Uh, this is trapezius muscle, this is omotransversarius, this is brachiocephalicus. As we come ventrally and medially then we see sternocephalicus muscle as well as sternothyroidus and sternohyoidus muscles. Okay, but before we go deep, uh, you can look at, this is the brachiocephalicus right here, just above the external jugular vein, that is the brachiocephalicus muscle. How many parts of the brachiocephalicus are present in the horse? How many parts does this muscle have in the horse? Is it three or two or one? Okay, as usual it has cleidobrachialis portion as well as cleidocephalicus portion but cleidocephalicus portion in the horse only has cleidomastoideus it lacks cleidooccipitalis okay and that's why we see the omotransversarius muscle is visible throughout its length its length 
was it visible in the dog was it visible in the in the in the small ruminants no because it was covered by cleido occipitalis muscle here the cleido occipitalis is absent so we can see the homo transversarius more clearly as opposed to other animals okay uh, that's the dorsal border of the homo transversarius muscle uh, here we're going to find your dorsal branch of the uh, um, accessory nerve but we'll see that on the other side okay now what we want to see at this point is brachiocephalicus with cleido mastoideus part and this is the homo transversarius muscle so notice the uh, line of cervical vertebrae or the way cervical vertebrae are located in the neck region those would be going along the homo transversarius muscle so as it goes more caudally in the neck region uh, those are located along this along this line and then you will be able to see the cervical spinal nerves coming off between or through the cleido brachial uh, cleido mastoideus muscle which is your part of the brachiocephalicus okay so we don't really need to see all of them but just know those cervical spinal nerves number 2 3 4 5 6 6 those would be coming off or coming superficially between or it, they would protrude through the cleido brachialis or sorry cleido mastoideus okay and that would be the line which would indicate present like uh, location of the cervical vertebrae in the neck region uh do you have any probe or something is there any probe you have in there thank you uh Here we have a nerve exposed here, which is located quite superficially. That's the greater auricular nerve or great auricular nerve, which is actually branch of the second cervical spinal nerve. We have this branch is ventral branch of the second cervical spinal nerve. Okay, so this is branch. This is the branch which is coming off the second cervical uh, cervical spinal nerve and going to the base of the ear. That is your great auricular nerve. Okay, now we can also find remaining. cervical spinal nerves along this line as you go a little bit careful dissection along the cleido mastoideus muscle you're going to find them coming off giving off ventral branches and dorsal branches the dorsal branches would take care of innervation of the muscles on the dorsal aspect as well as innervation of the skin while ventral branches they would take care of the muscles which are located ventrally as well as skin on the ventral aspect okay uh your homo transversarius as well as brachiocephalicus those are specifically innervated by the dorsal branch of the accessory nerve as well as the caudal part is innervated by the uh, axillary nerve which is part of the brachial plexus okay and very little portion of these muscles are innervated by uh, that is innervated by the cervical spinal nerves otherwise most of that would be innervated by dorsal branch of the accessory nerve as well as the axillary nerve as it comes more caudally okay Okay, so what nerve is this? That's your greater auricular or great auricular nerve, which is branch of C2, along the dorsal border of the and boundaries of the jugular groove. We can just imagine them because this is what you're going to see them on the live animal. Everything would just be covered by the skin. So when you feel the external jugular groove, you can really feel it as a soft area because we only have the jugular vein in the jugular groove, which can be easily compressed. Okay, so you're gonna feel that one. In the horse, there is nothing which covers the jugular vein in the cranial half of the neck, so you can easily find the jugular groove. Okay, so what are the boundaries of the jugular groove? What forms the dorsal border? What forms the ventral border of the jugular groove in the horse? Cleidomastoideus dorsally. Okay. Sternocephalicus ventrally. What could be the other name for sternocephalicus in the horse? it could be simply sternomandibularis because they don't have sternomastoid portion it is only sternomandibularis or sternocephalicus okay okay now let's move to the 